Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello and welcome to session 22 of Principles of Management course. I am your instructor Dr. Shikha N. Khera, faculty at Delhi School of Management, Delhi Technological University. Students, in the previous session we started off with the concept of motivation, wherein we discussed what are various definitions for motivation, approaches to motivation and what can be the outcomes of motivation if properly implemented in the organization. Let us now today have a discussion on motivation part 2 wherein we shall discuss on various concepts that is the process of motivation and the theories of motivation. When it comes to process of motivation students how it gets originated? Motivation that is the deriving force for us to do any job right now you are listening to me so there is also a motivation behind it. There must be some deriving force that you have opened up this gadget of yours and you are listening to the lecture. And for that matter, there must be some motivation for me while I am delivering this session. So this deriving force is nothing but it starts with some kind of unfulfilled desire in all of us. The desire to deliver the lecture, the desire to learn from the lecture is what prompts us to start off with. This desire then creates some kind of disturbance in our psychological setup and that disturbance prompts us to move ahead. So let us study this in detail with the help of process of motivation. So the word motivation basically has come up from Latin word movere which means to move. And it actually is a process, process to move. So the crucial role of manager in any motivational process is that of identifying the needs important to the employees and conditioning their behavior. We have to always condition the behavior of the employees and facilitating the, and fulfilling the identified needs and organizational goals. So as I mentioned the process of motivation it, it begins with some kind of need or deficiency in all of us. So when you get up in the morning you have a need to have some food. That is a deficiency or need in your body and mind. So that deficiency asks you to search for ways to satisfy the need. So you either ask your elders at the home or you yourself try to fetch food for eating so that your unfulfilled need or deficiency is fulfilled. Now based on this searching of the ways which is moved then further goes ahead with choice of behavior to satisfy the need. Once you fetch the food you realize that there are multiple options available with you. So with multiple options which one suits better to satisfy your need you will pick up. And then you evaluate the need satisfaction that after may be for example you picked up an apple to eat and you realize that whether that apple was sufficient enough to give a satisfaction to your hunger or there is something more that you need to eat to satisfy yourself. But once this need is completed, this process then starts again and you now determine the future needs and search for choice for that need. So probably the next need then is that let me go out and visit my school or college or university. Let me go out and see my office or maybe let me get ready and go to market. So some or other needs they cro crop up in this journey and this is a continuous process. When one needs gets filled up you come up with another new need and this new need then creates some amount of disequilibrium in your mind. 
and this disequilibrium creates a frustration in the mind. This frustration prompts you to go and search for the ways and need. Had this been the case that there is no frustration and no disequilibrium, then nobody would have worked, no creation of any kind of gadgets or tangible intangible resources would have been there in the mankind, in society at large. So let us quickly see these steps in detail. First, an individual experiences unsatisfied need and he wants to fulfill that need. The internal state that makes some outcome more attractive, so that is the also the unsatisfied need and unmet needs of a person act as derive or desire to attain the motivated behavior. So understandably motivation is possible only when a person has one or more important but unsatisfied needs. So thus the presence of strong needs is an essential prerequisite for success of a motivational process. Now the, in the second way, uh, second step that is searching for ways and means to satisfy needs, it is natural for persons with needs to find ways and means to satisfy those needs. So in fact the unsatisfied needs are the deriving force within individuals to propel them to desired behavior. For example, if an employee's promotion is overdue, due, what will the person do? He may decide to either demand the management to sanction it or he will try to put in some additional efforts to get that particular promotion. So this is the frustration or effort that the individual will do because of for getting the desired need fulfilled. Then next step is selection of goal directed behavior. So once individuals decide on their way to satisfying the needs, what do they do? They choose a specific course of action and display a goal oriented behavior. So this display of goal oriented behavior, if we take up in the same example of promotion, now the employee may see that let me take a training program. After taking the training program, my knowledge will be enhanced and my performance will be better. And after that better performance, probably I will get my due promotion. So unsatisfied needs are thus capable of activating, directing and sustaining the goal directed behaviors of the individuals. It is very important to understand it activates and directs the behavior of the individual. Then finally we know that what is it that I have to do. I, I know that I have to go for a training program. So for that case, this stage involves the execution of predetermined course of action and exhibition of appropriate behavior and at this stage, an individual consciously enacts to special goal directed responses that is behavior in expected situation. So not only going for training program, the person may also start working very hard, maybe he can work for long hours, he can exceed the performance targets and in, he may also think of improving relationship with his supervisors so that he gets his desired outcome soon. And then experiencing rewards or punishment based on the work that you have done based on the input that you provided. So outcome of any motivational process will be either reward or punishment for that individual. If the work hard that he was doing, if additional effort that he was doing, if the relationship maintenance that he did with supervisor was positive, he will get a reward, maybe promotion quickly. If it was not done properly in an ethical, in, in an unethical manner it was done, then probably it may land up into punishment. So when motivational process eventually leads to satisfaction of an individual's targeted needs, it becomes a positive and rewarding experience. So in organizations, there are certain factors which affect work motivation. So what are these factors? So several researchers have carried out, uh, several researches have been carried out by the psychologists to understand the reasons behind dissimilar responses from organizational members to identical motivational man management techniques. Now why dissimilar uh, responses to identical measures that the management is doing? If for example management is allowing people to have a flexi time and flexi time is a motivational tool or technique that they are utilizing, then why this can have a dissimilar response by different people? That this dissimilar response can be because individuals they differ in their personality, in their self-esteem, intrinsic motivation tendency and need for achievement. 
since they differ with each other in these areas thus this there will be dissimilar response so let us see what how these factors contribute in terms of different responses from different researchers so researchers have found strong and consistent relationship existing between personality characteristics and performance motivation of individuals so example here is that five dimensions of personality uh, which include openness to experience how far am i or you or any manager ready for any kind of new experience or they belong they wish to go for a status quo kind of thing also whether they are conscious their level of consciousness their level of extroversion whether it is they are too introvert whether they are too extrovert or where they are in between mediocre individuals agreeableness to things whether they get agreed to things easily or whether it is difficult for them to get agreed to and stability so logically there are different type of work motivations in different degrees research has indicated that stable conscious and disagreeable extrovert individuals have the highest level of motivation so this is the take away here students that you must rem remember or uh try to learn from it that tomorrow when you behave as, when you work as a manager you need to have these kind of or these characteristics inculcated in your subordinates so that they are highly motivated the next factor that affects in differentiation in behavior towards the same motivational technique is the degree to which people view themselves as valuable and worthy what is the self esteem level of an individual how much he feels that i contribute as a value or how much value should i be given value here is the importance given to the individual or worthiness of the individual so generally individuals with high self esteem are likely to be more motivated than with the low self esteem because low self esteem people will always doubt themselves they will have a doubt that whether i am doing right or wrong whether i am a, an individual who is best suited for this place or not etc so employees who have positive and good feeling about themselves are generally better motivated to do well in their job than those who have negative feelings for themselves so as a manager the take away here is that you have to identify such individuals in your team such individuals in your organization when you recruit them who have high self esteem because there are greater chances that they will be self motivated then comes the intrinsic motivation tendency we have already discussed this intrinsic motivation tendency previously also so here employees who incline more towards intrinsic motivation are more likely to persist tough and challenging situations why so because this intrinsic motivation is coming from within here no external reward is required so extrinsic motivation in contrast it tends to give up early in their initiative because it is purely dependent on something they get as a reward if they get reward they perform if it do, if they don't get reward they don't perform thus intrinsic motivation level is a better level so simply putting intrinsically motivated persons normally persist with their motivated behavior as compared to ext extrinsic motivation and also intrinsic motivation is associated with greater high greater and higher level of creativity and satisfaction than the extrinsic motivation then the factor further is need for achievement which may affect the response towards the motivational practice it is possessed by all people in different degree we all need to go for achievement orientation but then the issue with us is that what is the level of orientation or what is the magnitude of achievement that we want for us ourselves in the organization so individuals who rate themselves high in achievement motivation are likely to work harder and more persistently than those who are low in achievement motivation so achievement motivation basically means that how much are you uh, how much are you willing to achieve how much are you willing to persevere perseverance and hard work to reach to your goal so these were the factors students which enable us to understand what would be the difference between the attitude of individuals with respect to the common management uh, motivational policies in organization so as you can see based on their level of intrinsic or extrinsic motivation their personality type their self esteem level 
the all individuals will have different interpretation of the motivational policies. Now, in the same uh, line, many researchers, you know, in past 100 years or more have done lot of researches in understanding what can modify the behavior of individuals, how we can tell the employees to work in a pattern without offending him. In this line, researchers have come up with theories of motivation. So, they did researches, they did studies after doing surveys and practical experiments, they came up to solutions which they have given in the form of theories that if the organization performs X effort, probably the employee can be motivated. These theories of motivation are further divided into two categories that is content theory and the process theories. Let us now discuss these theories in detail. So, each theory advocates its own approach to effective motivation of the people and one thing that we have to uh, we have to learn here is that the results of these theories is only suggestive and not conclusive so broadly these motivational theories are divided into two categories as i mentioned content and process theories content theory focus on employees personal needs that they wish to satisfy through work. So, that means here the manager has to focus on or come up with such policies which fulfill the personal needs of the individuals. They focus on basic needs that decide how people will behave and they also focus on characteristic of work environment that facilitate the need fulfillment. While the process theories they explain how various variables jointly influence the amount of efforts put in by the employees. So, here variables are there and these variables have a common effect or a complementing effect on each other which then eventually influence the behavior of in members or managers. So, they place emphasis on how human behavior is initiated, sustained and extinguished as we mentioned earlier because in external or extrinsic motivation we saw the behavior can be behavior can extinguish if the reward is missing. Let us begin discussion of content theories in this session. These are the four content theories we shall be discussing. So, first starting off with hierarchy needs of theory, then two factor theory, ERG theory and acquired needs theory. The first theory that we have to discuss is Maslow's hierarchy of need theory. In this theory of Maslow, he has focused upon that we all individuals have certain needs in us and these needs can be put into a hierarchical level. Hierarchical level means one after the other. Generally, not conclusively, but generally the needs have to be fulfilled in this hierarchical order only. For majority of people, they have needs one after the other in this hierarchy itself. So, what are these needs? Here Maslow has said that the individuals have needs which range from their basic needs that is physical, physiological needs to the self-actualization need. The first need is physiological need physiological need which is the basic requirement of any individual to survive and what we can include in this food, shelter, clothing, they all are the basic physiological needs. So, Maslow emphasizes that if an individual is or when an individual joins an organization, he had some basic needs like when someone takes birth, he has a basic need of food, shelter, clothing. So, someone who joins the organization, he has a basic need of basic salary, maybe a place to stay, work, a workstation there in organization, etc. After the basic need is fulfilled, physiological need is fulfilled, the individual then looks for safety and security. That is, in general, when a small child is there, he wants to have a safe environment where he can protect himself from outside dangers. So, that is called his home. Here in organizational context, safety is the job security of the, organi the, of the member. 
job security which is one of the important features for anyone to be retained in the organization after the safety needs is need is fulfilled that is an organizational member a manager has or an employee has joined the organization which gives high amount of job security the manager wants now companionship which is the third need of maslow's need hierarchy theory and this is also called as social need companionship is which is every individual's desire you need to have a companion both in your professional front as well as in your personal life why to have a companion is to share and communicate your thoughts ideas experiences challenges issues etc and to have someone around you whom you can rely and trust upon for your lifelong decisions so this social companionship is the third need according to maslow's need hierarchy theory and this when gets fulfilled leads to the fourth need which is self esteem need under self esteem need an individual is now well comfortably placed he is working in an organization his job is secure he has got companions at place of work he has good friends also now he wants to have reputation in society he wants to see himself that where do i stand what is my worth or value which position do i hold so this is the time when member or uh, employee wants that he should get a position like senior manager vice president or maybe ceo etc so once this reputation need or self esteem need is fulfilled the time comes for an organizational member to have the fifth need of maslow's need hierarchy which is called as self actualization self actualization is something which we want to do in totality we took birth for a purpose and the purpose of our life is what is realized in self actualization for example you are a doctor and you served throughout the life you earned a lot of money you gained reputation also you became the director of an hospital etc but the inherent desire in you was to serve the society to do some philanthropy and serving this society through philanthropy was giving underprivileged people or those who cannot afford good treatment free of cost treatment to them based on your skill so as a result you open up a charitable hospital that is a self actualization stage or maybe as an individual you wanted to do gardening singing dancing you wanted to learn all these but you could not due to heavy burden of your lifetime priorities now this is the time that you can spend time and effort and resources to do that activity so that is self actualization stage so let us see theoretically how maslow has described these steps in his theory so it was given by abraham maslow in 1943 and these are the five needs which i have just explained you first the physiological needs safety needs social needs self esteem needs and self actualization need so physiological need is what is the basic need food clothing shelter etc and these are also called as lowest level needs for the individual usually this individual fulfill this basic need of employees through payment of basic salary and wages then comes the say second safety and security need that is when you want physical safety and also job security for yourself physical safety so that you are free from bodily injuries and any kind of emotional harms social and companionship need is when you need to have a relatively well satisfied social need in the in the society it is it primarily includes an individual's desire to be in company of others others who are like minded people and you can gel well with them then comes esteem self esteem or ego need this self esteem need is also called as internal esteem need which takes care of your strength confidence independence competence etc it comprises of the secondary need such as esteem and ego need become predominant motivator for people it is generally classified into internal esteem and the external esteem so as i mentioned internal esteem esteem is your strength and confidence etc and external esteem is your status prestige that you get out of from the position that you serve 
and then comes self axialization need which is the highest need in maslow's need hierarchy theory and they include a person's need to grow and realize or his or her full full potential in life sex self actualization is an open ended need category as it is connected with need to become more and more what one is to become everything one is capable of becoming so exploiting full of your potential to reach to your final goal or purpose of your life so here we can quickly see the strengths of maslow's need hierarchy theory so it is a very simple and straightforward analysis of motivation and it the emphasis of maslow in studying the healthiest and happy personalities when understanding the nature needs and operations of the people in contrast to many other personality theories this largely focuses on the practices of mal adjusted personalities and maslow has maintained a reasonably sensible and realistic view of human nature here he has insisted that the process of self actualization cannot occur automatically as it requires initiatives desires and efforts on part of the individual to reach to their full potential along with strengths there are certain weaknesses also of this maslow's need hierarchy theory so it is criticized on the ground that major concepts are not supported by any kind of empirical evidence that is any kind of research that he could have done moreover very few researches have been carried out to test the validity of the theory this theory is also faulted for its assumption that the needs are satisfied in order or sequence only or whether it is it can be in some inappropriate sequence like we have first and second need and then we can go on to the fifth need directly so in reality how higher order needs like self actualization need not wait till lower level needs like physiological needs are fulfilled so for instance self actualization needs may take precedence over physiological and security needs in some people in certain situations but need theories are has also been criticized for methodology adopted by maslow for instance he has finalized the characteristics of self actualization individuals based on biographies of writings of 21 people whom he stated as being self actualized only so it's a very small data to generalize any theory and this subjective judgment on self actualization cannot be accepted as a scientific fact so these are the criticisms for the theory of motivation now we move on to the next theory of motivation that is the content theory of motivation that is herzberg's two factor theory of motivation now under herzberg's two factor theory of motivation herzberg came up with the theory that in organization managers need or employees need two types of factors first he named as hygiene factors second he told as motivators and both hygiene and motivators they play different roles so what are these factors and what role they play they actually play role of satisfies job motivators and job dissatisfiers let us see which uh, factor plays which role so first going through the background of this theory herzberg's two factor theory Frederick Herzberg was an American psychologist and he developed this motivation theory of hygiene this theory popularly known as two factor is also satisfier and dissatisfier theory and the aim of herzberg study is to know the problems of human motivation at work and find an answer to question what do employees want from their job which is a most critical question for any manager that what should i provide to my subordinate or my team so that he performs well so herzberg conducted a survey among 200 engineers and accountants to know when they felt exceptionally good or bad about their jobs so what is this theory i'll quickly draw here to make you understand so there are two factors and one factor is the hygiene factor the other one are called as the motivators now in hygiene factors they are the basic factors that anyone wants in the job like for example you need table chair fan ac etc drinking water which is clean and drinkable they are the basic factors motivators are rewards promotion 
some kind of incentives so they will be the motivators so now hertzberg said that if hygiene factors are absent negatively present they are absent then what will happen if motivators are absent then what will happen if hygiene factors are present then what will happen and if motivators are present then what will happen so four conditions he gave so if hygiene factors are absent there is high amount of dissatisfaction amongst the members i hope students you also agree with me if you do not have basic factors at your place of work you would not like to work at that place you don't have proper seating place right kind of uh, hygiene environment drinking water lighting etc you are dissatisfied but when they are present then there is no dissatisfaction understand this term there is no dissatisfaction we are not talking about here the term satisfaction if they are present it is not giving any satisfaction but it is giving no dissatisfaction stage while for motivators if they are present of course there is high amount of motivation in the employees because they are present you have rewards you have promotion you have incentives but if sorry if they are present and if motivators are absent then in that case there is again no dissatisfaction so can you relate this no dissatisfaction here also and no dissatisfaction here also in the case they are motivators are absent so if you do not have rewards promotion and incentive there is no satisfaction but there is no dissatisfaction also similarly if you do not have the hygiene factors there is high amount of dissatisfaction so he played on this concept and he told that organization should focus on presence of motivators so as to have high amount of motivation and he should see the organization should see to it that they are not absent hygiene factors are not absent from the organization so let's see in detail the hertzberg's two factor theory so factors responsible for motivation and maintenance maintenance here are the hygiene factors so motivational factors which are job satisfier and maintain or hygiene factors which are job dissatisfier if absent not in the present if absent they lead to job dissatisfaction it is achievement recognition attraction of work self responsibility advancement and growth while hygiene factors can be company policy administration supervision salary working conditions interpersonal relations status security and personal life so this is how he differentiated these two factors so these two prior factor present four possible scenarios in the first scenario when both motivation and maintenance factors are high in job again students don't get confused these maintenance factors are the hygiene factors only and when they are high in the job then employees will have higher motivation to work well and fewer complaints about their environment so this is the first scenario the second scenario says when motivation factors are high and maintenance factors are low then employees will have higher motivation but many complaints about their work environment the third scenario says that motivation factors are low while the maintenance factors are high so then the employees will have lower motivation to work well but fewer complaints about the work environment in the last fourth scenario when both are low in job then employees will have low motivation and this is the time when employee generally tends to quit the job so manager has to see that he is giving him giving the organizational employees right kind of combination of motivators and hygiene factors so this is how the theory has been explained as you can see here in the continuum here the no satisfaction and no dissatisfaction line security and personal life where these are the hygiene factors here no satisfaction as i had mentioned earlier and when they are absent in the absence there is no dissatisfaction absence of motivators and presence of this gives no satisfaction absence of this also gives dissatisfaction next content theory that we have to discuss is called as 
ERG theory. ERG theory was given by Alderfer and along the lines of Maslow's need hierarchy theory only he developed this theory. So, here he has given three needs in the category which are existence need, relatedness need and growth need. So, he also said that we all have need for existence, need for relatedness and need for growth. So, these are the three needs which stands for ERG. So, existence needs are covered all forms of material and psychological desires of people which includes all of the first and second level basic needs that is physiological and safety needs of Maslow's need hierarchy theory that is the combination between the two theory students Maslow's need hierarchy theory and the existence need. Then comes relatedness need. So, it involves need for maintaining satisfactory relationship with other people in the organization. So, here the focus is more on social relationships or companionship. Everyone wants to belong to certain groups that I am part of that club, I am part of that group that gives them some kind of recognition and achievement and relationship needs of the people is fulfilled. So, it is similar to Maslow's third and fourth level need that is social and esteem needs of the managers. The third level need is the growth level need. It refers to the personal growth and creativity and competence of self-development need of the people. So, it is similar to fourth and fifth level needs of the individual that is internal esteem and self-actualization of the Maslow's need hierarchy theory. According to Elderfer, people needs are not satisfied in any particular order as Maslow said. Maslow said it is a hierarchy in which the needs are fulfilled. Elderfer says that note only they are three needs and they can be fulfilled in any order. So, different types of needs can be active at the same time. At one point in time you may have need for existence and growth together or maybe relatedness and growth together. So, what we can say in other words higher needs of person need not wait for the lower needs to be fully or mostly satisfied before they become active. So, Alderfer also introduced a frustration regression principle as the part of ERG theory and according to that uh, frustration regression principle even if the lower level needs are already satisfied ok. People will once again focus on these needs when their efforts to satisfy higher level needs are frustrated. So, they are not able to fulfill their higher level need they will go back to their lower level needs. So, for instance if a person fails to fulfill his growth or relatedness need he will tend to over satisfy his existence need by making a lot of money. So, if you are not getting uh, you can say successful in one area you are not getting good social companionship you are not getting your self esteem you may think of adding on more resources to your funds. After ERG theory now we move on to the next theory that is McClellan's acquired need theory. In this theory this American psychologist David McClelland he developed a acquired need theory which is According to this certain kinds of needs are learned or acquired during the life, lifetime of the individual. So, they are not which are natural occurring uh, individual needs, but they are acquired needs. And what are the three needs here? Need for achievement, affiliation and power that McLellan said. So, students McLellan tried to uh, give us a scenario where he said he where he researched and mentioned that needs can be acquired from external environment or internal environment and they can be need for achievement, need for affiliation and need for power. Now, what happens in need for achievement? In need for achievement people are success oriented. They are the ones who want to have challenging tasks. They want to complete the task and once the task is completed they feel very happy and they are satisfied from the job. So, they are they are the ones who take up challenging assignments like people who opt for defense services or maybe who want to become fighter pilot or a normal pilot anything which has risk and challenge involved in it they go for achievement orientation. But that is not restricted to these services even people in the administrative services can be taken as achievement oriented because they may feel that I am an administrative officer of that area or this branch or this department and I want to bring in these changes in my field 
so that is need for achievement need for affiliation is that a manager has a inherent desire to be associated with some group some social group some club some society etc or with some individuals or people whom they feel they have like mindedness so this is need for affiliation you want to get affiliated to someone for your emotional needs to be fulfilled and the third category of need is need for power now here there are individuals who have an inherent power to inherent desire to be authorized to do things they want to keep keep things in control so they want to take up jobs or profiles or work or task of that nature which has high amount of power involved in it control involved in it so these are three needs according to mcclellan need for achievement need for affiliation and need for power now in this mcclellan mentioned that we can have any one or two needs more prominent in us that we have acquired as an individual you may have more of achievement need and maybe a little bit of social need but least need for power similarly you may have higher companionship or social or affiliation need lower power need and moderate achievement need so that goes true for all the needs so at one point in time all three needs are not in uh, practice in general any one is more prominent or the second one is uh, in intermediate behavior people want to go for the second need as well so let us see the theoretical aspect of this theory so need for achievement as i told you it is desire to achieve success and excel in the challenging jobs so persons with this need normally take up responsibility for finding the solutions to vexing problems which are very difficult to achieve they do not match importance for praise or rewards because they generally consider accomplishment of the task as the most important parameter here need for affiliation is desire to be friendly with others so you if you enjoy team work you give importance to interpersonal relationship that means that you have high need for affiliation and you want to be associated with groups so people with this need normally prefer collaboration over competition and they are averse in high risk or uncertain situation they want to have a support from the group and group influences them a lot then comes need for power need for power is the need to influence and eventually control the behavior of others this can be an inherent desire in individuals to control on others it involves making others behave in the way one wishes and such people want to acquire authority over the other individuals and this needs it needs to win the argument successful persuasion they can be the example for need for power so you now can find out that in you as an individual students which need is more prominent need you must have come across to people who have high need for power who want to dominate who want to take up those assignments where powerful positions are associated or maybe someone who wants to be more connected with individuals in organizations so according to mcclellan people with high need for achievement display liking for task of the job they are innovated and anthrop innovative and entrepreneurial people with need for affiliation are good at the job good at the job of integrating people such as hr they achieve success in coordinating the activities of different people and department and people with high need for power usually succeed in getting the top positions in the organizational hierarchy so you can check for yourself which need is more prominent in you also the need is closely associated with how people view or deal with their success and failure this we are talking about the need for power for instance fear of failure as the resultant erosion of authority or maybe motivation motivate to uh, some people with need for power to succeed in their goals these can be the reasons where people get demotivated and in rare instances fear of success that is resultant loss of privacy can also act as motivating factor for individuals who have high need for power now let's see the evaluation of this acquired need theory that is mcclellan theory mcclellan and his team developed thematic appreciation test a projective psychological personality test for measuring the individuals level of need for achieve achievement affiliation and power and what happens students in thematic appreciation tests 
in thematic appreciation test the individual manager is shown a series of pictures which are ambiguous and they are not in any order as a result the manager is told to fabricate a story out of these pictures and that too spontaneously and when after looking at those pictures the manager or the employee uh, narrates a story or builds up a story that storyline tells the manager to identify what is the kind of need this particular person has more in them through the thematic appreciation test i hope you have understood this test students which is given by mcleland and according to mcleland the participants in all probability will project their own needs through these stories and when they project their own needs we get to know which need is prominent in them so based on the results appropriate scheme may be drawn up for motivating the employees and it can also be used for determining the types of jobs for which an employee might be well suited so they are the very much benefits of mcleland's theory now there are certain limitations of acquired need theory the projective psychological personality test used by mcleland is criticized by being unscientific so here we are talking about the thematic appreciation test which i just now mentioned so this is something because of being unscientific in nature it is criticized and the basic assumption of this theory that the acquisition of motives or needs usually happens at childhood of the person is not prone to easy or frequent ch changes is also being questioned in this particular theory so students we have discussed about the content theories of motivation and we shall be discussing the process theories in the part 3 for motivation session apart from content and process theories we have two more theories which have played a major role so these are mcgregor's theory x and y and auchi's theory z that have made important contributions to the study of employee motivation we shall be discussing these two theory two theories now mcgregor's theory x and y it was given by douglas mcgregor in the book human side of enterprises published in 1960 and it explains two different kinds of theories or assumptions about human behavior so this is called as theory x and theory y now what mcgregor has connoted in the theory of x and theory y he said that individuals in the organization can be divided into two categories one they can be termed as theory x individuals second they can be termed as theory y individuals what are the differentiating factors amongst these two category of individuals under theory x he mentioned that after doing his due research he mentioned that there there is a group of people they inherently dislike work they don't want to take responsibility they don't have ambition they are lazy by nature and they need to be pushed hard to get the job done on the contrary he mentioned that a group of people in organization are the ones who are very much responsible they have leadership qualities they are always very dynamic they are initiative seeking they want to have, be very creative they come up with creative innovative ideas and they seek responsibility so such individuals are called as theory y individuals why this was given Uh, by mcgregor because he wanted to tell the organizations or the managers that how will you decide what motivates the individuals it will be decided based on what is their own personality type or thought processes so since these two kind of individuals they differ in their thought processes in their approaches toward work their attitude toward work thus the motivation policies also should differ for them so here mcgregor added on that for theory x people he suggested that the organization should go for stick approach he came up with carrot and stick approach and he said that for theory x people to motivate manager should go for stick approach and for theory y people to motivate the manager should go for carrot approach let us see in detail this theory with academic inputs so the theory x holds negative traditional view of workers while theory y holds very much positive view of the workers which i have just explained to you in general assumptions of theory of workers workers 
with theory X inherently dislike the work, they have no ambition and they resist the changes and avoid any kind of responsibility. So basically what is their characteristic? They are self-centered and they do not care about the organizational goals and objectives. Contrary to this, sorry, they work contrary to the organizational goals. They prefer to be led by others, they do not want to be leaders at all and in general they are not intelligent and are mostly gullible. They are generally poor decision makers, so giving them key position will be very troublesome for the organization members. They need to be monitored and controlled closely to make the work effectively. And the fundamental assumption of this theory is that people work only for money and personal safety and security. These are theory X people. So, theory X requires organizations to do following to motivate these workers and increase the productivity. First suggestion he gave is minimize the number of situations in which workers are required to make decision by themselves. So, do not give them positions which involves lot of decision making or critical decision making. Second, provide predominantly extrinsic financial rewards to the workers because they may play major role as they do not have an intrinsic motivation that is within from themselves they are not motivated so we have to give some external motivation that is rewards to motivate them. Monitoring the activities of workers through tight or very close supervision is which what is required. Imposing tight discipline, enforcing strict performance creative corrective measures should be encouraged for the performance here and conducting extensive training programs for workers so that these training programs should more be on behavioral part because their intention is not to work on how do they, do they should work. In contrast to theory X, the assumption of theory Y are very much positive about the workers and McGregor developed theory Y after becoming aware of the flaws of theory X. So let us see what is the theory Y. As I have already explained students, the important assumption of this theory, theory Y is that workers they enjoy their work and if it can be as natural as playing or resting for them. Work may be one of the sources for job satisfaction for them. Workers are self-directed, self-controlled and in fulfilling the objectives to which they are committed. They are always focused towards that. They not only accept responsibility, but they also seek responsibility it under the proper conditions. Theory Y people are committed to their objectives and if the rewards for performance fulfill the higher order needs such as self-fulfillment self needs. So, workers have the potential and inclination to grow within their present roles and if possible even beyond that. Workers have the capacity to find the solutions for organization problems using relatively high degree of creativity, ingenuity and imagination and goals of workers can be same as those of the organization. Here it is a great parity of goals and this makes them wonderful employees. So the occupation, organizational group goals and individual goals are supplementary and not mutually exclusive goals. The intellectual potential of people who belong to theory Y are partially utilized under the conditions of modern industrial life. So based on the assumption of theory Y, organizations should evolve a system that motivates them and such system should have responsibility, ensure that responsibilities are delegated to the worker wherever possible because we know that they are self-responsible individuals. Also responsibility should have adequate amount of empowerment to them so that they can make the decisions. Techniques like job enlargement can be used so as to give their job a meaningful pur pur purpose and processes and workers are helped to align their personal goals with those of organization well through constant guidance and training. Further, according to McGregor, employees can be intrinsically motivated to perform well in their job only when their organization makes those employees less dependent on managerial system and control. So this is another takeaway from or evaluating factor or critical factor of this theory. McGregor recommended that organization should adopt managerial techniques like WPM, workers participation in management, decentralization and delegation of authority teamwork, job enlargement to improve the employee motivation. 
we can see certain characteristics or comparative characteristics of theory x and y people here you can see the skill of the worker is low it's high then attitude towards responsibility it's avoidance it's acceptance and workers likeliness for the job is very low while in theory y it is very high general outlook of worker is optimistic while in theory x it's pessimistic management style is predominantly autocratic and it's predominantly democratic types of work to be interested is repetitive work with narrow specialization and here they can apply creativity and promotion resistance to change is quite high and here resistance to change is very much low if we evaluate the theory of mcgregor theory x and y rated as one of the best known behavioral studies and mcgregor's work is seen as the pioneer study that paved the way for introduction of several modern management concepts like self managed teams and job enrichment is it was given by mcgregor's through mcgregor's theory now we move on to theory z which is auchi's theory in 1981 it is seen by people as extension of mcgregor's theory x and y and it has its roots in japanese management style and structure so assumptions initiated and practiced in japanese industry are part of theory uh, z of auchi which mentions that lifetime employment for workers so this theory tends to view job security as important factor and it says that it will inculcate loyalty and commitment and it will gain efficiency in the work of the members slow evaluation and promotion is projected here which means that performance of workers should be evaluated in slow and steady manner for long term basis and the promotion available to workers should be few and far between the work life of the people that will keep them motivated to work consensual decision making so collective decision making is what is focused in theory z group of employees who are involved in decision making are differently called as quality circles or teams quality circles jap was a japanese technique where people who were working on the shop floor together they used to uh, find some challenges and problems while working so it was initiated that they can make a quality circle group of people together can identify the job the one who are doing the job can find out the bottlenecks in the job together they can sit deliberate brainstorm and find a solution to it so this is one of the most uh, renowned techniques of japanese uh, working pattern quality circles and this is what is even focused by theory z also non specialized career paths should be focused upon it Uh, according to auchi employees who continuously perform new tasks are normally more important and productive than and satisfied with their work than those who remain on in one job only thus non specialized career paths should be focused and moderately specialized career path for the employee should be managed next is the focus of this theory was on is on individual responsibility this theory suggests that employees should work together towards the achievement of well defined goals and but the final responsibility should rest on the individual if you give a group responsibility then people will become fact will become the victim of social loafing where they can put uh, put in charge of work on other people will not take up the responsibility holistic concern for workers should be there according to this theory which mentions that The theory suggests that organization must adopt a holistic approach in dealing with employees that is employees have needs beyond their work setting also and that include but is not limited to uh, the needs like educational needs personal needs and family needs so holistic concern of the worker should be concerned rather than the only focus on their professional needs an implicit informal control with explicit formalized measure this is a very unique feature of this theory which means recommends that implicit informal control but with explicit formalized measure should be focused upon this is the midway approach between explicit and formalized control measure of american organization the implicit and informal control measures of japanese organization has been a success 
if we quickly evaluate now how theory z has performed and what criticism it has reached or it has gone through then we may see that theory z of auchi aims at creating a strong aspirite d corpse as you must have seen the prepositions that theory z focuses on is more of collaborative effort responsible behavior and a team spirit so sense of unity and common interest and responsibility among the employees should be there this theory thus believes in converting the whole organization into a highly cohesive group which is one of the most important takeaways from probably the motivation theories that how we can inculcate the group cohesiveness amongst members and have our members in organization highly motivated so students we have discussed today the concept the process of motivation in this session and along with that various content theories of motivation and in the end we concluded by understanding two theories which are theory x and y and theory z by auchi this is the bibliography that i have referred to for this particular session and i request you people also to go through this bibliography in case you need to have more insight in the concept and this is all from my side i would like to now conclude this session and we continue this discussion on motivation on process theory in the third part of motivation session thank you